So 2021 is almost over and what a wild ride it was. We've all had our ups and we've most definitely all had our downs, but if there was one thing that brought some normality to our lives, it was the ever faithful video games. Now we've heard on the old Twitter vine that 2021 wasn't a good year for games. We're not sure if we agree with that. Is there some kind of parallel dimension where no games were released this year? Every system had its fair share of amazing titles this year, but we'd be here forever if we were to talk about all of them, and the YouTube algorithm doesn't like it when we do that, so as usual, we'll be sticking to the Switch. The Switch had some amazing exclusives released this year that deserve all the credit they get, and in some cases, even more. But before we get into the heavy hitters, we wanted to shout out a few games that while aren't Nintendo exclusives, are still among the best titles to release this year. And of course, they can still be played on this beautiful machine. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and make sure to make it to the end of the video to find out about our personal game of the year. So with all the rambling out of the way, let's get into the best Switch games of 2021. I was so excited when Garden Story was finally released on the Switch this year after being announced on an Indie World showcase back in 2020, alongside some other amazing titles like Hades, A Short Hike, and Untitled Goose Game, and it definitely holds up against those games. I originally thought it was going to be a cute little farming sim, but I was pleasantly surprised to discover that it's actually an RPG. You play as a wee grape who is the guardian of a small grove. Your role is to improve your town, and as your skills as a guardian progress, you move on to protecting the other surrounding towns represented by the seasons to return them to their former glory. Garden Story has crafting elements, combat, some pretty cool mini dungeons and boss fights, and there are heaps of daily town quests to complete in order to improve your area's rank. This gameplay loop is super addictive and cozy, and I had heaps of fun with Garden Story this year. I'm going to start my list off with Little Nightmares 2, an absolutely gorgeous horror puzzle platformer released back in February. Now before anyone asks, no, you don't need to play the first one in order to enjoy this one. In fact, it acts as a prequel. Little Nightmares 2 follows Mono, a little boy with a bag on his head who is seemingly haunted by his dreams. Early on, Mono will find and rescue another young one, Six, and the two will work together in order to solve puzzles and survive the horrors that lie in wait for them. While Little Nightmares 2 is a horror game, it's definitely not your typical one. Jump scares are relatively few and far between, with the devs instead choosing to focus on mood and suspense in order to drive home the feeling of uneasiness you'll no doubt have all the way through this. Not to mention, it's a 2.5D platformer at its core. The character design here is probably the highlight for me. The antagonists in each area are terrifyingly creepy and look just absolutely fantastic roaming around each screen. The dread you will feel if one of them catches you is insane. If you like puzzles and horror, then Little Nightmares 2 is one of the best examples you'll find on the Switch and is one of the best games of 2021. Apparently I just love anthropomorphic fruits or something because the next game on my 2021 favourites is Turn Up Boy Commits Tax Evasion. This is an RPG like Garden Story but almost plays more like a Zelda game except more hilarious. This game is riddled with adorable puns and just funny references in general, and it really adds such a unique charm and personality to the game. I found myself giggling heaps while playing this, like when you have to subscribe to a Twitch streamer, or find a carrot baby in a trash can, and Jerry. We can't forget Jerry. Rest in peace, Jerry. Turn Up Boy is a short but action-packed adventure filled with laughs, bright colours, adorable NPCs, and some super satisfying boss fights. Our only complaint is that it was almost too short. We just didn't want it to end. I kind of hit a grey area here because Dragon Ball Z Kakarot technically released in January of 2020, but it didn't come to the Switch until this year. And screw it, this is a Switch list, and I played it for the first time in 2021. I will be the first to admit that this game probably isn't everyone's cup of tea. In fact, I'm pretty sure it got some pretty mediocre reviews. I'm just a crazy Dragon Ball fan, so here we are. Kakarot tells us the story of DBZ through the guise of an action RPG. I know so many games have told this story, but none quite so well as this. 
The cutscenes are so frequent and long that I honestly felt like I was watching the anime again. The gameplay itself is mainly that of a fighter. Surprise, surprise, it is Dragon Ball after all, but has enough collectibles, exploration and side quests to claim the RPG tag. Kakarot is one of the best ways to enjoy the story of Dragon Ball Z. If you find yourself wanting to experience the manga or the anime again, or even for the first time, then Kakarot is definitely the way to do so. Did I mention that I love Dragon Ball? Dungeon Munchies is a newfound love of mine since it was actually only released on the Switch a few days ago at the time we're recording this video. But as soon as I saw it announced on the latest Indie World Showcase, I bought it pretty much immediately and have been obsessed with it ever since. It's a side-scrolling action RPG with an adorable pixel art style where you harvest monsters for their bits and use them to create weapons and munchies. These provide you with unique power-ups and skills that you're able to combine in loads of different ways. Some munchies will allow you to slowly gain health back, perform counter-attacks or even block damage. Maybe I just suck, but it's actually pretty challenging too. Especially the boss fights, but that just makes it all the more satisfying once you beat them and mix and matching your weapons and munchies to figure out the perfect combination for an enemy is super addictive and heaps of fun. Mama. Ma. Mama. Ma. Now I noticed that all Laura's games so far have been indies, so I thought I'd better include an indie myself. In my opinion, the best one to release this year is Blue Fire. Imagine a 3D Hollow Knight sprinkled with hints of Zelda and then all rolled up into a beautiful platformer that is guaranteed to both frustrate and delight. Blue Fire is a rather challenging 3D platformer that manages to capture the charm the genre is known for in a far darker and more brooding tone. The game is far from unfair, but some of the voids you'll encounter will require a lot of skill and even more deaths. Blue Fire is also a Metroidvania game. The world opens up to you as you gain more moves and abilities, and you'll often have to backtrack in order to reach previously inaccessible areas. Exploration is rewarded and encouraged as collectibles and currency can both be used to upgrade movesets and weapons. There's dungeons, there's puzzles, there's some great NPCs, and there's just so much fun to be had. Blue Fire looks good, hopefully I've managed to make it sound good, and it just plays fantastically. Now that we've been through all of our favourite games that you can find on other platforms, it wouldn't be a some kind of gaming video without including the best Switch exclusives of 2021. Nintendo really redeemed themselves with the new Mario Party game that released on the Switch this year and we are so glad that they did. Mario Party Superstars fixes all of the gripes that were present in the flop that was their last Mario Party game on the Switch, Super Mario Party. We can't stress this enough, and we've said it before and we will say it again, but if you're looking for a Mario Party game for the Switch, make sure you get Mario Party Superstars. This game features the new and improved version of all of your favourite maps and minigames from the 64 and GameCube era, and even gives you the opportunity to play them with all of your friends in either local or online multiplayer, which is a priceless addition to a game like this and makes it heaps of fun to stream, which is where we had the most fun with it personally. Mario Party has always been an absolute classic for families and friends of all ages, and the new 2021 release is the best one yet. Shafting your loved ones by stealing their stars or setting traps in this virtual board game has never been more fun, and we really felt like our best of 2021 list would not be complete without it. We actually did a full review on this game already where we go into more detail than I have time for today, but check that out if you'd like to know more. So my first Switch exclusive is going to require a little bit of explaining. Super Mario 3D World was the Wii U's big Mario platformer, and it's one of the many great games from that era that have made its way over to the Switch. But this time we got Bowser's Fury, an entirely separate experience. I won't lie to you guys, Super Mario 3D World isn't exactly my favourite 3D Mario experience, especially when you compare it to great games such as Odyssey and Galaxy. So I hear you guys screaming at your devices, then why is it among the best of 2021? Well my friends, Bowser's Fury is why. Bowser's Fury. This lovely little addition is an open world 3D platforming experience and it has cats, 
and Super Saiyans. Honestly, what more can you even ask for? But seriously, apart from the obvious fact it's a ton of fun, the game is wonderfully designed. It feels like you're simultaneously moving into a new level while also staying within the world at large. It's such a joy and makes me so excited to see where Mario will go from here. Bowser's Fury is short, as you can complete it in roughly 3 hours, but it just adds so much to the series in both world design and unique mechanics, like the raging Bowser and your epic boss fights with him. I spent maybe 5-6 to six hours here exploring and collecting, and while that's still short, quality over quantity any day. Now Super Mario 3D World isn't bad by any means, so when you combine it with Bowser's Fury, you easily have one of the best games of 2021 and definitely one of the best on Switch. Okay, so I guess I'm kind of cheating. The Animal Crossing DLC isn't necessarily a new game, but Happy Home Designer introduces so much new content that we thought we could squeeze it in here. And it is based off of an older title by the name of Happy Home Designer on the 3DS, which was a whole game, and this is pretty much that by the New Horizons version, which I was unapologetically obsessed with. So here we are. Happy Home Designer didn't really sell Tommy at first, but upon playing it, the embers of our New Horizon obsession burst into flame once more, and we found ourselves addicted all over again. Eventually, when your island is five stars and you've terraformed every corner of the place, you run out of space to decorate, and Happy Home Designer really comes through with all of the space you could ever need. You find yourself upon a vacation island surrounded by villagers with their own styles and interests that need the perfect getaway created for them and it is your job to create their own slice of heaven. You can take a decent amount of creative freedom here too and even create the likes of Ron Swanson's perfect escape or the some kind of gaming stream room. As you progress, you're able to create amenities for the island itself and create things like schools and hospitals where you can even employ your favorite villagers to work. We can't recommend this DLC enough, and it's pretty reasonably priced at 37 Australian dollars. Or it does come with the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Service, where you also get bonus Sega Genesis and Nintendo 64 games like Ocarina of Time. The online service does leave a lot to be desired, but that's a video for another day, or we did actually discuss it in our podcast Some Low Grade Gamers, but if you're going to get the Animal Crossing DLC anyway, then it definitely makes it more worthwhile. I'm sure no one is going to be surprised by this next one. It was the one Nintendo exclusive that was up for Game of the Year at the Game Awards and was actually just awarded that illustrious title by Time Magazine. We're of course talking about the wonderful Metroid Dread. This game was actually conceived in the early 2000s and actually started development around 2006 before being cancelled for a variety of reasons, including technical limitations of the DS. To say that fans have been waiting a long time for this is an understatement. Well over a decade has passed since then, and was it worth the wait? Hell yeah it was! This is the best Metroid game. Not just the best 2D version, but overall. Metroid helped craft an entire genre of video games, Metroidvanias, and Dread proves that it is still the undisputed champion of them. And I don't say any of this lightly, I am both a fan of other games in the series, and of the genre as a whole. This game is extremely well thought out, down to every little detail, including the title. Dread is exactly the feeling you'll get when you enter into an Emmy zone. These areas are home to terrifying robots whose one and only goal is to take down Samus. This is where elements of stealth and horror have been snuck into Dread. These DNA extractors are impossible to fight and the mere sound of their clicking is enough to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. The audio design is perfect. Emmy zones are of course a standout in this field, but the music as a whole makes you want to continue your exploration while simultaneously being afraid to do so. Dread is also gorgeous. The backgrounds of each distinct area seem like they stretch out forever and contain a staggering amount of detail for a 2.5D game. Enemy sprites are ridiculously varied and sensationally thought out, and even Samus' death animation looks great. Metroid Dread is quickly becoming the latest must-own on the Nintendo Switch, and we have absolutely no arguments with it being many people's game of the year. But for us personally, 
there was two other titles that just managed to knock it out of the top spot. Monster Hunter Rise is undoubtedly my 2021 game of the year. I hadn't actually played a Monster Hunter game before this, so I didn't really know what to expect besides monsters, and that's pretty much what I got, with the addition of some of the Switch's most stunning visuals and some epic new mechanics. I was immediately addicted to hunting monsters and completing quests while simultaneously harvesting their parts for epic armor and weapons, and I often found myself going back to hunt the same monsters so me and my kitty could have a matching set. So cute. The creatures that you'll find yourself slaying here are all completely different but equally badass, and they all act like their own boss fights with a series of unique gnarly attacks. There is also a wyvern riding mechanic here where you're able to ride the monsters, running them straight into walls causing massive damage, or using them to attack other beasts, taking full advantage of their attack strength, which especially in the early game far exceeds your own. There is so much to do in Monster Hunter Rise, from creating and customizing your character and gear, to making stat-boosting Dargo, and even just learning about the rich history and lore behind all of the monsters. Possibly the best thing about Monster Hunter Rise is that you don't have to take these hectic monsters on alone. You can also play this game multiplayer. The visuals are incredible and the gameplay is so addictive. Monster Hunter Rise is a truly epic experience and we cannot recommend it enough. It has definitely earned its place as my game of the year 2021. My game of the year for 2021 is none other than Shin Megami Tensei V. Where do I even start with this one? I love everything about it. Imagine if Pokemon all of a sudden grew up with its audience. It's dark and gritty with themes of culture and religion. It tackles real world issues such as politics and bullying, and the Pokemon are now demons. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it is a JRPG where you collect monsters to fight by your side, but that didn't sound as cool. There is so much depth to this title, with everything from its story and themes to its gameplay and mechanics. SMT5 is set in Tokyo, and while the story will take you on a wild ride through an alternative, post-apocalyptic version of the city, it feels strangely grounded by the fact that you, the protagonist, are a school kid and still have to deal with all of the social issues that come with high school. On the surface, the battles are a simple turn-based system with weaknesses and resistances, but dig a little deeper and there is a whole lot more at play. For one, your skills and type affinities can be changed through the forbidden ritual of essence fusion. Then there are miracles that are unlocked through the use of a currency called glory. These influence everything from how much control you have over your own demons to how foes react in battle to your character's affinity with certain moves. My favorite mechanic, however, is Demon Fusion. This allows you to combine two of your lower level monsters into a far more powerful beast. This also requires a bunch of forethought as you have to choose to part ways with some of your treasured friends who have no doubt fought some hard battles by your side. Shin Megami Tensei V shines brightest in regards to its demons. Most, if not all of these are inspired by folklore from right across the world and their designs as well as their rich lore is something to marvel at. I've read all the bios I can, and I'm usually not one to do that. SMT has seemingly flown under the radar, as we haven't heard many people talk about it, but I implore you to give it a go. Yes, it's quite challenging, but take your time with it, learn the mechanics, fight some more demons, and I guarantee you, you'll find a ton of joy in my favorite game of this year. So there's each of our favorite Nintendo games for the year 2021. Let us know if you found any of your favorites here, or alternatively, if you thought our list was crap. Even better, you could leave your own list in the comments below. Be it Switch games or not, we would love to hear what you enjoyed this year. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to tackle every Nintendo title that got released this year. And we're pretty sure that there are some games in our backlog that would have definitely made this list if only we'd got around to them. Before we go, we would like to mention our podcast that comes out every Tuesday. We catch up with our friend Dan from The Low Grade Gamer and discuss news and current events in the world of gaming. For the next five weeks, we will be giving away a free indie game code, so make sure to tune in to find out how to get your hands on one. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of another video, and thanks again for all the liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. 
stay safe over the silly season and have yourselves a very Merry Christmas where hopefully you have time to tackle some of that backlog. I'm Laura and this is Tom and we'll see you next time.